Welcome to Shorty Supercar. Just going to take a look at my side in a minute. What is a bit of a classic Shorty vid coming direct from his car, so nothing unusual there. But um, I want to take a look at my side in a minute. I did one probably a couple of weeks ago, but I thought, particularly at this stage of the season, you know, we're really starting to see some practice games. So there is a bit of change, not too much, but I figure people love the most is seeing how someone else's team is going and how it's tracking. So I thought I've done a few profiles and a few discussion videos, but I thought probably the best thing to do would be, you know, if it's every week or two, certainly an update on how my team is traveling. So just a bit of a refresher um, as to how my team was looking. That's probably pretty hard to see, but this was my video last week or a couple of weeks back. And I must say the forward line is probably the main thing that has changed um, to be fair. So you can take a bit of a look at that if you like, and then we can take a look at how we're going right now. So as you can see, back line hasn't changed the slightest. I'm really happy with how it looks. You would have seen my Lloyd video the other day. I just think it's a bit too expensive and hasn't had the year on year runs on the board. Hence I'm going with Laird. I love Whitfield. I think he'll be the number one defender by the end of the season. Witherden's my real breakout sort of guy. Doesn't have to break out too much, but I think he's really on the rise, as are a lot of Brisbane youngsters. And I think um, he'll really take himself into the next bracket. Williams selects himself. And then you've got a few blokes who, you know, look, Collins and, and Hoare in particular look pretty likely. But, um, you know, we need to see pre-season games don't we, to, to find out what's going on there. Uh, midfield, <coughs> excuse me, bear with me. I'm still struggling with that cold. <laughs> I feel like I've had this bloody cold for ages, but um, one change there, and it is Walsh included into my side. <coughs> excuse me, and, and Fife is still in there at the minute. Um, obviously, he's going in for elbow surgery. That came out on the Saturday today, and... I felt, you know, at first I heard the news, Fife in for surgery. I thought, Jesus Christ, you're kidding me. You look so good in the AFLX, but um, I think it's pretty minor stuff. You know, they expect him to be back training, you know, very, very soon. Certainly not a matter of weeks, maybe a week, and he'll be back to full training. They they hope that he'll be right, or they expect him to be right, JLT, one or two, and, and really get him going. And I don't think that's the sort of injury not long enough layoff to affect his fitness base, which is really the only concern when players have injuries pre-season, that fitness base and not being quite right. I don't think it's going to affect him. But Sam Walsh, historically, Shorty hasn't really picked too many top draft picks or even draftees that are a bit higher priced. Sometimes that's worked for me, sometimes it hasn't. But I haven't always enjoyed the fact that they're 80 to 90K more expensive than a guy who can probably do the same job. But the way Walsh, by all reports, played the other day at the practice game suggests that he's almost a guy we, we just can't say no to. I think he's going to play games. That's going to be an absolute lock. He's going to be week in, week out, unless he gets a bit sore. He's going to be playing for Carlton regularly at senior level. And by all reports, he was very much at home. Looked classy against AFL opposition, backs himself in. Real ready-made talk. I know they pump guys up week in, week out, year on, year out. But there's been a lot of talk about Walsh is just a sure thing. You want a 200 gamer, you want a star, Walsh is your man. Pick him at number one, you know what you're going to get. So I really like what you can get with him. And he could even bust out a 75, 80 sort of average, which would be fantastic. But um, otherwise, I'm really pleased with how my team is looking. The ruck department hasn't changed. I'm really happy with that. Uh, line is probably where a little bit of change has happened. Um, Dangerfield and Heaney, absolute locks. I've been tossing and turning with the F3. Absolutely tossing and turning. And I know I shouldn't be, because we've got weeks, you know, we're gonna see practice games. Things are gonna evolve and unveil themselves that might answer the question anyway. Yet I think about it a lot. I've gone with Tim Kelly at the minute. And what brought me to that decision? Well, he's going to play pure midfield. And I really love that because I was 
I was just going through my head. I want a midfielder. I want a midfielder. There's guys out there that, that have good prospects, but their position isn't absolutely locked in. I speak at Dunkley, uh, McLean were a couple of guys I was looking at. Um, Petrarca I've really liked at times. Um, but Kelly, the fact that Ablett's going to play a lot forward, even Selwood might float more half back at times. Kelly is definitely going to receive midfield minutes and I don't think he's going to go anywhere else. You know, all players go elsewhere for portions, but it's not as though he's going to be one of these 40-60 split guys. He's going to be 95% of his time through the middle. Dangerfield, Duncan, Kelly. That is absolutely going to be it. Um, obviously, there's a few guys, the likes of Menangola and Scotty Salwood and Joel will still be in there and, and Parfit and those sort of things. They'll definitely be in there, but I love the fact that Kelly is going to run through the midfield. Second year, wants to go home. Yes, they're all concerns. Don't get me wrong. I have my concerns about it, but for the minute, that's how it's rolling. Um, Willem Drew, I also think, is an outstanding selection. Really impressed in the intro, I think it was, the other day. And he's a Ballarat boy. I've, I've met him. I've spoken to him. Big-bodied midfielder. You know, fairly high pick. I think he was top 30. And he hasn't played yet, and I think this is going to be his year where he gets plenty of opportunity. And I wouldn't be surprised if he really takes his chance. So, overall, pretty pleased with my team at the minute. I will make a bit of an admission. I speak of the F3. Well, the man who was there probably three or four days ago, Mr. Jack Billings. Now, I'm not going to apologise. He was there. I did have Billings and Darcy Moore. And I think I had uh, Stocker in there as well. Um, so in essence, I went, um, well, basically it was Billings and Moore out. And I brought in Walsh and Kelly. And, and I like that. I think Moore could be anything. And that's what you hear. He could be absolutely anything. But there's probably one thing that I've learned, and Billings can probably go into this conversation too, is you don't have to get too fancy with your starting team. You know, people go, oh, you've got a cookie-cutter team. You don't have to get too fancy. You've just got to get it right, nothing sexy, go with what you know, reliable picks. Yeah, Kelly's only done it one year, but, geez, a mature age, he couldn't have been more impressive. And by all reports, he's tearing the track up. So when I looked at Moore and Billings, I think they could be really good selections. If you got them in your side, I wouldn't be advising against them. But for me, I just want a little bit more stability. And, and there's a lot of time before round one, of course. A lot of things can change. But I, I really like Billings as a prospect. I think we'll see him get back to 90 plus. Where he falls, I'm not too sure. And Darcy Moore, as I said, he could be absolutely anything. Shows plenty of flair out of the back line. But even his body is a bit of concern. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say I definitely wouldn't pick them. They might enter my side at some stage again. But at this stage, that's how my side's looking. <clears throat> Walsh sort of made himself sort of just so easy to to pick. I mean, he almost made himself too hard to say no, basically. I mean, the way he was playing, and I saw his ownership went from about I think it was 40-odd percent right up to the high 40s, I think it is at the minute. So certainly a natural reaction. And, and that forward line is is where I'm just sort of wondering what I do, um, particularly the F3. But I'm really comfortable with that at the moment. There's probably a few different rookies and things like that. But I can't stress enough that I really do think that you don't have to overdo it. And as I was saying before, I think one thing I've learnt is that you don't have to go that alternative selection. People talk about point of difference players and they can be very valuable, but I think for me, I back my trading in. I think if in running terms, you know, if if the season of super coach is an 800 meter race, I, I just want to be there with 700 meters. You know, I just want to be there with a hundred to go. I want to be in the race and I think too often in years gone by, I'm well behind the leaders after 200 metres. And, and I claw it back with good training, uh, good trading, and, and, you know, I look good sort of around the six, 700 metre mark, but I've just left myself far too much of a gap to make up. So maybe it's a little cookie cutter. 
maybe there's not much point of difference in there, but I just want to be with the pack. And I think I can back myself into trade well. Um, and I think then if I can be there and abouts, um, you know, in seasons gone by, going some selections that are point of difference and, and making a bit of a statement, you know, I, just off the top of my head, you know, Dylan Shield a few years let me down. Christian Salem let me down. Um, even premium selections. Hanabry let me down as a premium the other year. Um, Bonton Pally let me down as well. So there's just a few examples. And sometimes we search for this hidden gem and this point of difference and this breakout guy where just get the obvious right. Get the premiums spot on and you should be right in the hunt. So um, that's about all the words of wisdom I can uh, offer you at this late hour on a Saturday night. Um, got an early start tomorrow with the rowing event. So hence I'm not getting up to too much tonight, pretty laid back. But um, that's my side. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know how your team's going. I'll certainly be dishing out a few player profiles pretty shortly. And hopefully if you've got any requests, you've been putting them in and hopefully I can get around all of them ideally, but we'll see how we go. So thanks again for tuning in and I'll be back soon. Cheers.